when the walls fall down, what do I want to be? I mean, what vision has really captured my heart long enough for me to cash it all in and to follow? What gets me out of my bed in the morning and gets me excited about living life? What gets my heart beating fast? What legacy, what impact am I really wanting to make? And then a second question. What am I doing to get there? Am I worthy of this call on my life? Am I even able? Do I have the capacity physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually to rebuild the walls? Why me? Why here? Why now? With news of displaced relatives, with news of enemy inhabitants, with news of a fractured city and broken walls, Nehemiah didn't run down and take an IQ test. He didn't go check his bank account to see if he had enough money to make the trip, make the journey. He didn't consult his boys and get their opinion. He didn't read a 10-step help book on how to rebuild walls and lead a lost nation back to prominence. And likewise, Daniel Rodriguez didn't sign up for more singing lessons. They also didn't look in the mirror and list all the reasons of why they shouldn't be the man for the job. Why shouldn't you be the man for the job? Who do I want to be and what am I doing about it? Nehemiah simply asked God for a fresh start and a prosperous game plan. That's it. A prayer, a plan, and then a goal. Build the walls. What came next are three tests that Nehemiah passes to successfully complete the job of building walls. And I want you to hear these three tests because these three tests are a blueprint for any successful leader, a great man. If you, if you want to be a great man, listen to these three tests. A good husband, good baseball player, a great student, pick your profession or expertise. I think it transcends any line of work. The first test that Nehemiah had to pass is where I think a great man and a great team begins. It's the test of responsibility. You've already been hammered with it for three days. Alright, I'm going to hammer you again. You ready? Alright. How was this true in Nehemiah's life? Let me tell you exactly what Nehemiah's role was with the king. I already told you it was a cupbearer, but listen to what a cupbearer did. It meant that the king trusted him with his life. He was not just a servant to the king, he was the cupbearer to the king, which means any time a drink was handed to the king, it was Nehemiah's job to know whether that drink had any poison or not. And if anybody had it out for that king, Nehemiah's lips were going to taste that wine, that drink, before that king was going to put it to his. Like the secret service, alright? Like the guys guarding the president. This guy was going to be taking the bullet. And here's a guy that's a, a Jewish man, an arch enemy king, and this is the guy that he puts in charge of protecting him. And for Nehemiah to get time away from the king's service, he would have to approach and ask the king to let him travel to his home of his ancestors and to rebuild the walls. But as simple as the task of cupbearing may sound, it gave Nehemiah a badge of honor and credibility with the king. The fact that he had been in service of the king, that he had been a right-hand man, a man protecting him, get, made him a man that he could trust, a man of character. So it made the response to the question, may I go rebuild the city walls? Sure. What else you need? Listen to what else he gave him. He gave him letters for safe passage through the foreign land. He gave him timber to rebuild the gates to the city. And he gave him an army of soldiers to lead him on, those, on his way so nobody would mess with him. Hear this from the life and the character of a cupbearer, a man who is trusted. If you want wings to match your vision, if there is a fresh vision on your heart, and hopefully as a team, after we hear this message to rebuild walls, to build a wall of a championship, hear this from the cupbearer. If you want wings to match your vision, 
your vision to build mighty walls, you must first pass the test of responsibility. Who is going to believe your message if you aren't showing it in your daily actions? Who is going to follow you into the foxhole if you have not trained to the highest level? Who is really wanting to sit under your leadership, lock arms with you, wake up at 6 a.m. with you, run up Chase Hill with you, or hit in the cage until midnight with you if you or those in the team aren't doing likewise? Who is going to appreciate your enthusiasm, listen to you speak, appreciate your success, or walk to the edge of the cliff if you are not living proof of this message? Someday, men, your name is going to be on the marquee of the business. I'm going to come shopping at your place. I'm going to come ask for you to do dental work with my kids. I'm going to come ask for, for help in a wide range of things because you guys are going to be incredible. Your name's going to be on the tax return. It's going to be on the marriage license. Or it's going to fix firmly at the top of a growing family tree. And a lot of eyes are going to be fixed on you. Can you be counted on? That's the question. Whether you are blessed, listen to this, whether you are blessed with walls as high as the eye can see, or whether you're in the midst of struggle and your walls are tumbling at your feet, who is going to be able to count on you when it matters most? I can promise you, over the course of nine months, we will have walls erected high in moments and we're going to have walls sitting at our feet. Who's going to be there through it all? Samuel Bringle, Salvation Army preacher, says this, The final estimate of men shows that history cares not, not an iota for the rank or title a man has borne or the office he has held, but only the quality of his deeds and the character of his mind and heart. <clears throat> My charge to you is this, be on time. To class, to practice, to the bus, to a meeting. Be a gentleman. Words, actions, public and private. Be well groomed. Appearance is half the battle. The countenance of a champion stands tall above others. Be in class. No exceptions. If you're not eligible, you're no help. Be ready and willing to work and don't cut corners. Be true to yourself. Who are you? Are you funny? Be funny. Are you serious? Be serious. Are you loud? Be loud. Are you quiet? Work harder than anybody. And show me in your actions. What are you and who are you going to be? Be true to yourself. Be teachable. Be coachable. Be committed to team. Be good to those close to the program. Administrators. Those who travel on the bus. The little dudes who stand outside the fence who come to camp and know you from camp are going to be fixing their batting gloves and batting just like you at their practice. And begin it today. It starts today. It lasts through the course of this, this race. This run. Listen to this. We can't have high expectations collectively until the individuals in the group have high expectations personally. 